Hi everyone, I'm Carlos Quion Jr. I'm a curator based in Manila and I'm here at Silverlands Galleries um, with artist Nicolas Garcia. And we're here in his exhibition titled Come Back Kid, um, his first solo presentation in Manila curated by Erin Gleason. Uh, please welcome Nick. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Very, very excited that you're here in, in Manila and very excited for this exhibition. Um, can you tell us firstly more about the exhibition, um, about the title and maybe your collaboration with Silverlands and Erin? Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. Um, totally, it's been a special occasion for me coming back to the Philippines, you know, for the first time in four years. And that's in a way also where the title is coming from. I was thinking about like various, you know, um, motives of like or reasons that made people move throughout time and places, different places, and uh, comeback kid felt like a you know fitting title for that. A comeback kid is someone who you know shows resilience and like doesn't you know let you know um, hurdles and obstacles let himself or herself down. So that was one one idea. But then again, it was also like you know some auto fictional kind of like incentive meaning that I'm coming back in a sense. And um, on the other hand, what I also really like about the title is that it refers to some sort of like command as if somebody urges you or a parent urges you to come back. And all of those things were, yeah, informing the uh, exhibition a lot. Can you tell us more about the, the initial conversations that led to the show? particularly with Silverlands and also the way you're collaborating with Erin Gleason for this project? Yeah, it was great, uh, you know, to get to know, um, first of all, Erin. I was applying to a residency in, um, in Amsterdam, the Rijks Academy residency, and Erin was one of the uh, jury members of that board. And when I was in the final interview, we got to know each other. She learned about my works, then I learned about her, you know, her investments in South Asian um, practices and artists, practitioners, and um, then she approached me telling me about Silverlands and I remember um, when I've been back to the Philippines in 2018, that was the first time that I've been back in like 10 years because I, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't possible for me to come back during my studies. So I was desperate to look at like different museums and spaces and stuff like that, but I somehow couldn't find it in the beginning. Also just like, you know, not being in the know, like not having any access to um, the Filipino art world. So it was great to like learn about the scene here through Aaron, and then yeah, I got to, I got in touch with like uh, Isa and Rach, and um, learned about their pioneering work really here in the Philippines, and that really excited me to do um, you know to enter that collaboration. And this is your first show in Manila, right? My first ever exhibition in the Philippines. Yeah. How do you feel about the reception of your work in in Manila? Were there maybe anxieties or maybe apprehensions, or what were you most excited about? presenting your work here for the first time? I was definitely super excited, but like also anxious, as you already mentioned. I mean, um, working or coming from Germany or having this like Filipino background, it was always, you know, pretty ambivalent. It was always a pretty ambivalent situation, in my opinion, because I, on the one hand, was super invested about in like learning about my, my heritage, my culture. At the same time, um, it wasn't really, I wasn't really sure whether, you know, once I really enter the Philippines and exhibit my, show my work there, or what I find interesting about the culture, whether that will resound with the people here, if they will get it at all, maybe it's like trivial information. And like, I was kind of like timid and scared about like, you know, um, presenting my research finds here. But what I really encountered once I, you know, got in touch with people during the opening, people that I met in, a, in, a, in, the, in the process, and afterwards was that they were super open, like interested in the, uh, in the topics and that many of those finds, uh, many of those um, elements that, you know, informed my exhibition actually were not that obvious uh, in their, yeah, in their perspective. And I think this ambivalence, this idea of being ambivalent uh, with showing your work here is, is a recurring concern for you, right? Like um, when we, Erin, you and I first met and discussed the possibility of this conversation, one of the things that we talked about was this ambivalence and how even in the very iconography of your paintings or in the way you approach exhibitions, um, it figures strongly in how you approach these things. Can you tell us more about your idea of ambivalence and how it figures in your work? 
yeah definitely like um duality or ambivalence has always been like following my artistic practice but also like um, you know personal life in many in many ways um on the one hand you know being um a queer person definitely uh <laughs> made you feel made me feel a lot of like ambivalent you know um, feelings and situations exposed me to a lot of like ambivalent situations but also you know um, racially speaking being a biracial person has always placed me in a very you know weird gray zone when it came to many different things or yeah registers and uh, the same it was the same for me always with like whatever I was painting or focusing on in my in my in my art be it like paintings you know performances videos I was always drawn to figures that like exemplify or like visualize various worlds, various identities, alter egos uh, was always something that I was looking into to make sense of my of my world that just like always felt so, you know, um, yeah, as if like different worlds are clashing. That's how it felt to me. And like looking at the Filipino history, for example, and knowing that, you know, the Spaniards is like the Americans have been here. You can also see it here. It's like a pretty, yeah diverse uh, culture and ambivalence um, is in a way also like uh, appreciated here it's not necessarily something that irritates you or you know scary it can also be something very enriching I think and that's what I what I love about like figures you know shapeshifters here for example talking about like alter alter egos this painting here from 2018 actually is based on an etching from uh, Jericho like a French you know um, artist and uh, however, the figures are like dressed with that like weird mask, uh, the scream mask. And in many, many cases, I considered those figures, you know, um, an alter ego of mine. Um, as they really often also appear in performances of mine and it just really shifts from one medium to the other in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we see that in all of the paintings that you have for the show. Like, I think one of the things that is most striking about the works is the way you remix and reformulate certain sources. And I know um, while talking to you a while back, like the sources for the, for the paintings are very diverse. For example, you have um, your mom's and your relatives' um, memories in the Philippines, um, Philippine history, or even um, history of race. Um, can you talk more about how these things um, inflect your artistic process yeah definitely i mean <clears throat> when it comes to my process i'm really often like i'm trying to be at the same time like a sponge and at the same, like a very porous you know being um letting every impulse every piece of like information enter my system to like then synth synthesize that and um talking to people like my mother uh, has been super important in formulating my my artistic practice and also this exhibition this very exhibition here because some of those works have been like literally made you know with my mom being in a living room during during the uh, COVID pandemic or with her commenting what I was painting and or whenever I was taking a break looking at the painting you know she would comment what she sees and then she would it would it would inform the next steps of the paintings i had something completely different in mind and then she would say oh that you know that that uh, carabao there this like water buffalo um looks like my buffalo from when i was you know that in that age or whatever and it it's always been very important to me to like you make use of that multiplicity of like voices that i encounter in my surrounding and then intertwine that with my with my research finds and i find that um pretty important, I think, in my practice to like clash, like ha I have those things clashing in, in that space. And collage for me is also like a way um, of combining different genres and medias and like maybe, you know, renegotiating the way you want to be perceived because really often people put you into like a specific box, you know, you're like a, I don't know, POC person painting figuratively and then they want to place you in a specific, you know, register or whatever, or interpretation scheme. And um, by keeping that influence or the influences that I have as open as I can, and like shifting between different mediums, I try to evade that, like, uh, you know, reductive conclusion. <laughs> and I guess the exhibition as a medium and as a space um, allows for you to, to um, play out these agencies that you were talking about. Um, one thing that I also noticed is 
like the primacy of performance, even in the way you approach the exhibition. Like for example, um, when we talked about the works, it seems like the the works are almost like prompts and props for you to remember and also to maybe trouble the idea of um, a crystallized identity, which I think what happens in most cases with um, artists from the diaspora, from the diaspora is that they tend to um, crystallize this identity as something that is like remote or maybe um, fig uh, that figures in history, for example, Filipinoness. Um, so maybe what I want to ask is, how do you approach that idea of performativity in this in this aspect of your practice, especially in the exhibition? And for example, one nice touch that I also noticed and that you shared with me is also the the vignetting of the space. Um, so can you tell me like the links more about the links of um, your artistic practice with performance or how ambivalence? Um, place out in that kind of approach. Yeah, pretty much like, uh, you know, every exhibition to me or whenever I get the chance to like exhibit in a space where I can alter the spaces, you know, look um, is a chance um, for me to like engage with a specific performative agenda that I have in that moment or, you know, a specific um, yeah, idea about like exhibition making that I have, because really often I feel like you're producing a specific, you know, a certain type of like, you know, one-to-one -one translation of this is the exhibition, this is the content, this is what you're supposed to see. But what I really like about like making, you know, um, making art, displaying artworks is the, the, the ongoing dialogue and the, um, you know, uh, the um, organic evolution of an exhibition. So I chose in this particular exhibition, I chose to work with the material that I, you know, uh, actually wanted to place on the floor, um, soil that would have would have probably <laughs> destroyed this building ASAP. But um, I still thought it was an interesting material to work with because because it changes over time. Some parts come off the wall, you know, they dry out. You see cracks, and that's pretty much how I see or how I approach my paintings as well. Some of them are like maturing. Um, in my studio, I'm reworking them after a while. I'm I'm changing their 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 out their color concept as I produce new paintings. Certain paintings I never show to the public because I just need them for myself. Because I feel like when I when I exhibit paintings or whatever work, really something else happens to it. What they mean to me it changes in a way as well. So it's in a way a constant play between like or a play of like um, showing my work to people engaging, getting feedback, altering it, you know, and having those influences come in. And it's the same with the archive that I have um, uh, next to the video piece in the show. It's an evolving archive where I show se several, you know, book titles, book covers, articles that I found really interesting for the formulation of the show's, you know, backdrop. And at the same time, it's changing. And I, I intentionally kept it that way. So I knew that I'm going to be here in the Philippines for a while. I went to um, the province where I, you know, said hello to my other, the other side of my family that I haven't seen in even longer than four years. And um, I found various pieces there from like our family archive that we once brought from Germany to the Philippines. And, you know, amongst those things, for example, was the first like course book that my mother had when she learned German in, in Germany. And, I just thought that it's a great way of like, also, you know, to present and show how objects were traveling um, throughout time. And this is pretty much also something that, yeah, interested me in this exhibition, to show figures and like different narratives of people and, you know, tribes that were traveling for various reasons, immigrating from one place to the other, you know, maybe they were persecuted, maybe they just were striving for a better life or whatever economically speaking, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's definitely a reason why I wanted to keep the scenographical elements and the archive pretty open, yeah. And I think within this approach, like the way you um, try to mediate and also refract certain histories or certain memories, um, however violent or however volatile these uh, experiences or maybe research, the research itself is, um, there is a palpable sense of play in the way you approach 
um, your figures, your paintings, the archive even, I think that's an, an, an interesting um, dimension to the archive you're showing is that it changes. So there's kind of play in the way you paint and the way your artistic process works. Um, can you tell us more about like how play, how important play is, the idea of being playful? Um, is in the, in the configuration of this exhibition. Like for example, you have a seeming like auto portrait of an anime character, mm -hmm. and then this the masks are also one way to like how popular culture enters the iconography of the exhibition. So can you tell us more about that? Definitely. I mean playfulness and like uh, all of those things like satire, pastiche, uh, irony, humor have always been really important to my practice because I feel like in, on the one hand, they can really be some sort of like Trojan horse entering somebody's mind. And like, and on the other hand, you know, in terms of like propaganda, it sometimes is used that way or to make mock or, you know, ridicule people. It can, use, it can be used that way. On the other hand, it can be like a very subtle form of like interacting with someone without being too in your face and like making use of, you know, um, humor in order to like get the conversation rolling in the first place without like stopping the conversation right away. And uh, yeah, I mean, really often, for example, especially when the subject matter feels very archival or archaic or, you know, antiquated, people have no relation to it, I feel. They, they don't really relate to it anymore. And, you know, they become indifferent to the, uh, to the subject. And what I love about like pop culture, like playing around with, with references and aesthetics is that you can, you know, make people stop and look at it. For example, when I talk to, to like, you know, friends of mine, many, like, especially, you know, non-art friends that I tend to have a lot, they have no clue who, J who James Baldwin is, but like, they know who Tuxedo Mask is from Sailor Moon, for example, because we all grew up with that in the 90s. And uh, I do that really often. I painted Josephine Baker as a Sailor Moon. And here, you know, James Baldwin, African-American poet, um, queer person uh, as, as a tuxedo mask. And yeah, people immediately react to that saying like, oh, that's tuxedo mask, right? Or is it you? And I'm like, maybe it's me. I, lo I love, you know, mystifying or irritating in a positive sense, that I, as I said so often. Um, and the same here, I mean, this is basically, yeah, it's a storyboard, like a mood board for a performance I'll be doing where I'll appear as a James Baldwin character, you know, holding a glass rose in my hand and like interacting with like sound, sound uh, elements in the exhibition. That's where like different perspectives are clashing. Like on, on the one hand, I, I know what the painting is saying to me. And, and on the other hand, I'm like learning about the painting, what the painting wants to say in conversation with people looking at it. So it's a, yeah, it's a two-way channel, really. Yeah, and I think it also highlights how complex your sense of affinity with the Philippines is, especially um, with a show, a homecoming show. Um, and it also highlights how um, complex the feelings you have um, with the Philippines. Uh, in relation to the Philippines, like for example, Philippines is home but not quite because you grew up elsewhere, you practiced elsewhere. Um, and I think I can, we can circle back to one, one thing that um, surfaces in this exhibition, which is your idea of autofictionality. So can you tell us more about how you approach this kind of homecoming and how important it is that the idea, your idea of autofictionality and alongside like performance and also playfulness, um, how does this consolidate into one, like an artistic process that you're comfortable with or that you um, find productive? Yeah, I mean, autofictionality really for me is some sort of like guiding force when it comes to like producing work. Just because I feel like I, on the one hand, I can you know I can very easily produce work that I that I personally care for or that where I know you know. What it personally, where it personally matters to me, um, or what the personal connection, what my personal connection to the uh, subject matter is. But what I always find really interesting is when the work, you know, um, reaches that stage where it has a more universal quality to it, and where people can connect and like access the uh, content. And that's where the auto fictional part kind of, you know, um, jumps in. And really often, yeah, I, you know, as a starting point, I take a personal story or like something that I 
personally have observed and then um, I mix that with research finds, different, you know, um, play with the chronology of, of, of things depicted in the, in the uh, image and um, that's when I feel when friction starts to happen, really. And um, ultimately, I really just want people to like think about what they see and like care about like, you know, their own interpretation and like just, uh, yeah, want to talk about the, um, the content of the work mm -hmm. and exchange, discuss it and maybe even, you know, don't, they don't even have to, there is no common denominator, mm -hmm. really. It's like very much about like language, you, you the same with humor or, you know, um, curs things, things that kind of like offend you. It always really depends on your character, what your previous experiences have looked like and stuff like that. And that's what's beautiful about like discussing mm -hmm. um, works. That's the only way for me to like make sense of my of my identity as well. I feel it's so changing, it's constantly changing. And as you said, like coming to the Philippines, it's uh, it's so weird because like I had a past life here as a little child, and then again, my 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 mother, especially you know, who was my only Filipino relative in Europe, mm -hmm. was always making sure that I would not forget about my family here, my culture. We would go to like Filipino festivals whenever there was one nearby in my hometown and uh, we would go back here every year. So it was a lot of like fictional worlds that she was creating, that I was creating, a lot of projection, a lot of like, you know, as I was growing older, a lot of like motivation to like find out what matches the reality, what not, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's very difficult for me to like imagine producing work that is not auto-fictional yeah. <laughs> anymore. Totally, totally. Like, um... I think that's very interesting. That's, I think that's the most interesting aspect of the exhibition. And I think my final question would be, your mom has seen the works, right? <laughs> what does she think about them? <laughs> she was super, I mean, she was super excited and proud. Like she's, see, she's seen all of the uh, different works um, in different stages. Mm -hmm. Some works she has seen not knowing that they will be shown in the Philippines one day. Some works she, 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 she has seen while they were being produced for the show especially in newer ones like the Carabao, and she was super excited to see it all come together. Because, um, you know, in, in your artist mind, you're just like envisioning everything in a specific, you know, setting, or you have a vision of how it's going to look like. But um, it's very difficult to transport that image and like, you know, make somebody else feel what you feel about like your excitement to bring it all together or your, your insecurity about like bring it all together. And uh, for her, it was just like amazing. And what I, what I personally thought was so interesting about it was not just like the works per se, but that the event in itself became such an important you know, factor for her. It was the first time that my, that my family was able to see my work, what I'm doing for a living. Um, the first time that they realized, you know, what art making might mean. And it was, it was, a, it was a great moment of like exchange and, yeah, and understanding and I I had a lot of like conversations with my with my cousins who were all of a sudden super interested in like, oh, how to enter that field and stuff like that and just really, yeah, made me proud and like excited for them to like enter and dive into that world more, definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for this wonderful conversation. The exhibition Come Back Kid, created by Erin Gleason with works uh, by Nicholas Grafia, runs until September 10th, so you can visit Silverlands Manila to see the works for yourself and find out more about the artist. Thank you very much. Thank you.